The topic I will introduce to you this morning is to how to package the introduction section of your research paper. The learning outcomes for this session will be for you to identify the specific area, problem or question addressed in the study, including its scope and its significance, recognize the gap in existing literature, and understand the reasons and rationale for conducting a research and to write a systematic and a problem-based introduction of a research paper. The workshop targets will start with the planning process, the writing, polishing, and publishing, and using it. And this will eventually become part of your output as you will write down your introduction section for your research paper. I will introduce to you with the concept of the IMRAD method. And this morning, I will talk on the introduction on how to package it and how to write an effective research introduction for your research paper. Let us begin with the word IMRAD. IMRAD is an acronym that stands for the introduction, the methods or materials, the results and discussion, and the structure. In the figure I am presenting to you is the structural component of a publishable research article according to Swales in 1990 and Zager in 2000. In the introduction section, you can notice that it has the context, the research gap, and the aim of the study. The next portion for the IMRAD will be the materials and the methods which comprise of the study objects, the materials, the participants, the preparation of objects or materials or even the selection of participants. The materials and methods also talks about the study design or the research design of your study. It also explains the interventions, example, for an experimental research or for a quasi-experimental research method. The method of measurement and calculations are explained in the materials and methods. And if the paper or the research is all about a quantitative design or quantitative research design, then a statistical analysis will be described in the materials and methods. For the results, the presentation of the results will be the most important or the first result of the study, which is based on the statement of the research problems. Other results in specific order and the least important or the last results. The discussion section will start with the statement, statement of the main result, unexpected results, or even the expected results, comparison with the literature, explanation of results, and limita limitations of the methodology, generalizability, and the conclusions. The IMRAD is actually a way to communicate research-based findings, and it has been adopted many years back because it is eventually the most scientifically accepted way to present a research in a particular field of study. Let us delve on the elements of the introduction. Remember that when you write your, your introduction, it is where you put an answer to the area of darkness. That is why in introduction, you can actually see the research gap or the gap, the practical gap, the conceptual gap, the theoretical gap you would like to address in a particular problem of inquiry. The second one will be, it is in the introduction section where you also discuss the main contribution of the research paper. The third one, is in the introduction wherein you will explicitly state the major gaps that the article will address and explain why the study is important and why the study is a worthy research problem. And usually in the introduction section, it is where the researcher or the student research writer will put the motivation or the objectives or the statement of the problem, or actually, it is a problem gaps statement 
why the study is important. So in the elements of introduction, in the traditional research paper, we named it as a chapter one, which is the problem and its background. And what does this chapter one consist? Usually, your chapter one consists of your introduction, the theoretical framework, the conceptual framework, the statement of the problem, the hypothesis, if depending the nature of the research, if it's quantitative research, and you write assumptions if it's qualitative research. You also talk about the scope and limitations of the study and the significance of the study. And in the traditional thesis or traditional format, which we call it as a Germanic format, we write down the definition of terms and describe each variable of the study with their conceptual definitions and operational definitions. I would like to present to you a strategy or a technique on how you write down your chapter one for your specific research paper. The section should include the introduction and the content of your introduction should chart the research problem from the global, national, and local context using a model I call it TIP. And the TIP stands for the trends, the issues, and the problems. The theoretical framework describes the general theory which underpins your proposed study or your conducted study. And the conceptual framework is actually linked with the general theory discussing and presenting a model of your conceptual framework. Take note that your conceptual framework is a model developed by the researcher on how the variables in the study will be measured and how a certain problem of inquiry will be explained or will be explored by the researcher. The next one will be the statement of the problem. And we also sometimes call this as SOPs. The SOPs should always be written in an interrogative form or in a question form if it's for a student's research. And you write down also the hypothesis linking it with the theory and concepts. You need to present them. And the hypothesis should always be written in a null form. All hypotheses should be written in a null form particularly when it is a research proposal or even when they completed the study because this is what the researcher would like to test after the conduct of the study. On the scope and limitation, it will discuss the possible limiting factors of your study and eventually the significance of the study provides why your study is important, particularly to those regulatory or legislative agencies or groups of people and others. The significance of the study should also discuss the possible output, the outcome, or even the impact of the study that it will benefit a certain agency, locality, community, or a regulatory government body. And of course, in your definition of terms, you try to use it and describe each variable of your research operationally and conceptually as you will define them. The next portion is I will introduce to you how to write your introduction section using the inverted pyramid model I developed for the past years of my experience as a researcher and as a research manager. I call it as inverted pyramid model because it has eight elements you need to structure the introduction section. Take note that as you are writing down your introduction section, there should be a backup data coming from literature and information, data and statistics should be backed up with factual information coming from trusted agencies or trusted government websites or even world websites wherein you can get 
actually the problem, the existing problem at the, at the global, national, or regional level. And take note that in the introduction section, the conceptual definitions of variables should have been written as part of that paragraph in the introduction. So the eight inver inverted pyramid model comprises of the, its eight elements, as I call it as the first one, which is the biggest in the inverted pyramid, is a general problem to be explored. Take note that when you write your introduction section, the global or the continental problem must be given emphasis. On the next level, you need to present the issue or circumstance at the national or regional level. This means to say that problems actually happening at the global level are actually the same problem that are actually happening in the national or in the regional level. That is why research problems becomes universal when it becomes uh, or when it is being described at the context of global, continental, national, or, or regional. Do not forget that in your introduction section, you also write, what are the theories that underpin your study? Because in every research problem, in every consequence, or every problem or inquiry, there are always established theories that are actually explaining the relationships of the variables we are about to explore. So therefore, you get theories that could underpin the study. And from the theory, you write down the literature gap. Take note that your literature gap can be called from literature sources. They can be in the form of journal articles. They can be in the form of legal bases coming from the department orders, memorandum orders, or from books or from other reading materials that are actually explaining factual information. And of course, there should be a paragraph stating what will be the contribution statement of your research. This is what a good research introduction would tell you, that in the introduction section, you already describe what will be the contribution of your research to the body of knowledge, to the practical advancement of the work on the upliftment of a community life or whatsoever contribution that the research intends to pursue. And next to that contribution statement of the research, you need also to present the local environment of your study. And usually, in the project management, I call it as problem gaps analysis. Because even in writing any forms of research, whether it is a fundamental research, whether it's an action research, whether it's a research project, gaps are always being addressed. And usually, the gap analysis of the research problem can actually be called from the local environment. It is where the researcher will understand that there are actually portions, there are actually felt needs for the conduct of that research study. And it is also very good to note that moving at the, at the bottom of that inverted pyramid is for the researcher to present the personal intention why the study matters to her or him being a researcher. In the advancement of research management, we always understand that those who need to conduct research are actually the people who are experts. And you cannot become an expert in that particular problem of inquiry or field of study if you do not have the necessary preparation. That's why for a science-based researches, scientists could actually conduct research on it. For a social science, therefore social scientists can actually conduct a study on it. So it is what the personal intention 
that describes the authority in the field. And at the peak will be the aim of the study, which explaining going beyond to that statement of the problem, going to that aim of the study, what does this research paper intend to address? Or what does this research paper will do at the present? And that will be the aim of the study. It is the statements wherein is stated in interrogative form, wherein that will be the compass or the guide for the researcher to understand the problem of inquiry being explored. So these inverted pyramid elements are actually uh, developed and it has been used even in writing research article. As a professor, I use this one with my students and I hope you can actually appreciate how to package your introduction section using these eight elements as you structure them to be the best introduction section of your research paper. So this will be the first activity sheet that I will uh, be going to present. And you will do this one with the help of your group mates. So the introduction section presented in an article canvas that the article outline will be to present the problem to be explored at the global or continental concern, then the issue at the international or regional, then the relevant theory that underpins the study, then the literature gap of the research, then the contribution statement, then the local environment of the study wherein you present the needs analysis. Take note that the needs analysis will justify the felt need for the research at a particular community. And we are addressing actually that when we conduct research, it should always go to the level that the community will appreciate the results of your research. And this is how you will write the need analysis or the gap analysis for your research problem and your authority or intention of the field and the aim of your study. This will be an article canvas, and I hope that you will answer this one as the first activity sheet for this morning. So you can write down your concepts, actually do a brainstorming with this so that you could eventually come up with a good introduction portion for your research. So I will give specific examples on the eight elements needed to structure your introduction section. Take note that some of the examples I will be presenting were actually taken from published research articles of the University of the Philippines. Because I use this as a model because these are actually published research papers. And eventually, when they are published, meaning they have underwent the process of quality assurance, and before you will publish, it comes with the process of peer review. So as a model, in writing your introduction section, I will be presenting some models coming from a published research output. And eventually, you can adapt. Take note that there is no much difference in writing the introduction section of your thesis or your Germanic thesis to an IMRAD format. When I talk of Germanic thesis, we are referring to the structure of your thesis with chapter one, having its problem and its background, having its uh, statement of the problem, and all of that. But in the IMRAD, which we, is different because IMRAD is actually the synthesized portion to communicate scientific information, IMRAD is actually a shortened version. But take note that in writing the introduction section, it should be the most important part of the research paper. So, as an example, present the general problem to be explored from the global and continental. So, in a given example of a research paper written by my student titled, I Will Stroke 
find motor related interventions and hand exercises in enhancing pencil handling grip attitude of first grade schoolers. Helping the eight elements from the general problem, issue circumstance, theory underpins the study, the liter literature gap, contribution statement, the local environment, the personal intention in the study. These are actually the eight elements that would provide a better picture of the introduction section. So in a given example, this paper is actually a research paper done by one of my students who won the best undergraduate thesis this year, uh, last year, 2023. And we were able to come up using the format I presented. So from the study in a global problem, she started in a global and continental context, she started writing that handwriting difficulties are a global concern affecting children's academic achievements and future employment opportunities. In the issue and circumstance at the national level, talking about in the Philippines, the first graders face handwriting challenges due to limited in-person instruction and increased screen time and transition to remote or blended learning models during the COVID-19 pandemic. This means to say, that many students were not able to write properly due to COVID-19, due to that COVID restrictions at that time. And the theory that underpins her study is grounded in the understanding that handwriting is a complex task involving both the lower level perceptual motor and higher level cognitive processes, or we call it as the uh, motor development. Motor development theory. In the lit literature gap in that research, she emphasized that there's ex uh, there are existing researches but do not fully explore the relationship between the fine motor skills and handwriting performance, particularly the impact of pencil size on legibility of pupils. And as to the contribution statement of the research, the research aims to address the global challenges of handwriting difficulties, providing evidence-based interventions that can benefit the educational system, the healthcare professionals, and industries requiring proficient handwriting. At the local environment of the study or her gap analysis, at a particular school, grade one students or grade one pupils showed significant gap in mastering the proper handling and grip that are essential for the academic progress of these children. And as to her personal intention or authority in the field, the researcher, leveraging their expertise, aims to study, aims to design and implement interventions to improve the fine motor skills and handwriting readiness among, grade, among first graders. And the aim of her study is to investigate the effectiveness of fine motor related interventions or FMA and hand exercises in handling the in pencil handling and grip among the first grade schoolers. Take note that the introduction was uh, framed using these eight elements, and these are the summary portion. That's why when you look at the actual paper, her introduction section has uh three to six pages. Or it could eventually, you can condense it into three to four pages. It depends upon how you as a researcher would like to explain the context of the study, the background of the study. So moving on. So a review of the eight elements, we try now to explore how do we write it. So the study is focusing on the handwriting difficulty. So the paper is started in presenting the general problem to be explored in a global and continental level. So when why handwriting difficulty is a global concern. So in her paper, she was able to get information coming from respectable international 
bodies like the UNESCO, like the World Health Organization, like the AOTA, because they acknowledge the barriers to education and development that children with learning difficulties encounter. And handwriting is one of the challenges. In the global problem, it also explains that handwriting is a complex task coming from different authors and experts like Smith and Galsman and Barbecue in 2022, Santangelo and Graham in, 2020, in 2016. And challenges related to graph motor skills such as handwriting can significantly influence the child's academic achievements and confidence, self-confidence, so as has been explained and noted by authors. So this is the general problem of the study. Always start it with a global concern. The next level is to present the issue or circumstance on a continental, national, or regional. So difficulties in handwriting skills of first graders during and in the post-COVID-19 in the Philippine setting. So handwriting difficulties of first graders have been a topic of concern. And in the Philippines, these are the factors that contributed to the difficulties of grade one learners, attributed to the limited in-person instruction, increased in-screen time, because most of the time, students are actually doing uh, or using their gadgets. And eventually, no more... Uh, hand exercises for them that could eventually strengthen their grip in writing. And the third one is the transition to remote or blended learning models during the pandemic. So this will be the presentation of the issue at the continental, continental or national or regional level. What do you notice? Of course, at the national level, you can actually understand that there is a problem at the national level. Moving on, on the theory underpinning the study will be the motor learning theory and the development perspectives on pencil handling and pencil grip. So the theory underpins also that paper and pencil exercises in the actual classroom scenario accounts for the 40% of class time for students and increase students' progress through grades with handwriting proficiency, benefiting academic skills, and daily functioning activities. So take note that we try to write in a classroom most of the time with that 40% of our time listening or learning inside the classroom. So the study is anchored on the motor learning theory and the development perspectives. As to the literature and practical gap of the study, of course, you need to get information coming from respected studies published, respected studies conducted before for the past five to ten years, wherein some of the researchers will tell what they have discovered about handwriting. In a given example, in the gap of the literature, while a specific research on the prevalence of handwriting difficulties among Filipino first graders is limited, studies from other countries suggest that significant percentage of children struggle with handwriting. For example, a study conducted in Iran found out that the prevalence of handwriting difficulties among children was 34%, 67% for the boys, and 33% for the girls. That's according to Khan and Sharma in 2020. Another study found out by Margot Van Hart and Hartingsveld and Associates in 2015 noted that handwriting problems in children from 6 to 12 years ranges between 12 and 33%. And from this literature, there's actually a gap that are actually explaining the gap at the local level or a gap in the Philippine setting. So it is therefore necessary and important to address handwriting difficulties in first graders as they can impact the academic performance and future success of learners. The next level will be contribution statement of the research. So what will be the contribution statement? Uh, of the research 
it will also talk about how the study will benefit the communities or the group of learners, the group of uh, teachers, or group of uh, professionals, or particularly the pupils who can benefit from the study. And part of that literature also is the practical problem of the study. Take note that the practical problem will also be described as part of the literature gap. We have two things to consider. We have the practical gap and the literature gap. Your literature gap are the literature talking about the gaps that have been discovered by authors who have come before you. So these are actually taken from the literature, explained, and literature published for the five to ten years. And they can be called as lit literature gap. Now, the practical gap are actually the gaps happening in the field or the gaps that are actually prevailing why the study needs to be conducted in one particular school, in one particular industry, in one particular setting of that research. And that will define how the research problem is actually uh, being explained by the uh, researcher. So early childhood programs frequently included activities that support development of fine motor skills, including painting, drawing, coloring, according to author year, author year, author year. Okay? So of course, your contribution statement of the research, you can write it down in one paragraph, in one paragraph explaining what will be the statement, what will be the contribution of your paper, what will be the contribution of your research, why it is a felt need to be conducted. And of course, the local environment of the study, which is actually the gap analysis or need analysis, is, is, is where the researcher will explain in paragraph form, why the study is uh, a need in a specific uh, research setting. In a given example, we call it as the problem diagnosis and context of the study. So in a given example, the study identified a practical gap in the context of X school, a private art diocesan school in a municipality of where, where grade one learners were observed to have difficulty in mastering proper handling, which is fundamental skill for academic progress. The grade one pupils of the school year 2023 who were preschoolers during the COVID-19 pandemic experienced disruption in their early learning and development. And due to limited access to in-person schooling and reduced opportunities for hands-on activities, they are now struggling to develop their fine motor skills. So in the assessment conducted before the study, it was confirmed that proper handling and grip were among the least mastered competencies of grade one learners. So that is actually the presentation of the local environment of the study, the gap analysis or the need analysis. So of course, as you present your personal intention, you need also to write one paragraph, one short paragraph or brief paragraph explaining your personal intention your authority in the field, why the study is of interest to you. Anyway, uh, this cannot be written or this cannot be found in any research, but I just included this one as the one of the eight elements in writing your introduction section. So that when you write, it becomes so personal. Take note that writers have different styles in writing. And you yourselves have different way to express why that research is of interest to you. And you can write a brief statement about it. And of course, the aim of the study explaining the, the goal or the intention of the research. So in short, uh, this will be how you can get an actual problem, problem diagnosis for a practical gap. So this is actually a sample of my mentee last year. And 
the simple practical gap can be explained in three columns. What should be, what is actual, and what is the gap. This is very elementary. So what should be, for example, first grader should start writing from left to right and top to bottom. But what is actual is that 14 first graders have mastered the correct pattern in the writing. And what is the gap? Among the 15 pupils, only one first grader is still mastering the correct pattern in writing. At least there's a gap. Okay, So that can be uh, a given example. Another uh, is first graders handle writing tools correctly, proper ha pencil handling and grip. That should be. This is the competency. But the actual is only two first graders have proper pencil handling and grip. But the gap is 13 first graders have improper handling of writing tools. Now, if you contextualize this one in your own research problem, for example, you are designing your own biometric attendance monitoring system for employees in your institution, what should be is a productive uh, organization where your staff or employees are not coming late and they're really productive in fulfilling their outputs, their duties. No, So that should be. But what is actual is that suppose you have 10 staff and only five are actually doing, doing this... Uh, Biometric attendance are, are actually doing their attendance or coming to, to the workplace. Only five. So you have five gaps wherein how will you address this one? So there's a need for you to design a biometric monitoring system for your staff. can also increase productivity in a workplace or working station. So these are actually the practical examples. Okay. So what should be, what is actual, and what is the gap can be a way for you to write down a very specific and systematic uh, research introduction for a particular study. Okay? So again, the aim of the study is given as an example. The study aimed to investigate the effectiveness of fine motor related interventions and hand exercises in one particular school. I would like to tell you that most of the examples I have here were taken at the level of the classroom based research, but the structure of these eight elements can be adapted what, whether your research is developmental, whether your research is experimental. So any kind, any types of research can actually fit to these eight elements needed to structure your introduction section. You know, it, uh, when your research is more on experimental, the better than the better how you can present the introduction using these eight elements. Okay. So again, a review of the inverted pyramid model. The eight elements will be the general problem, the issue or circumstance at the national regional level the theory that underpins the study, the literature gap, the contribution statement of the research, the local environment of the research or the gap analysis, the personal intention, and the aim of the study. Okay? So let's have another example coming from respectable databases. So this will be a, a walkthrough session for all of you listening on how to write down your introduction section. So in the study, assessing the floodgates, utilization of social capital as adaptation to the flooding of selected households in two barangays in Bay Laguna, Philippines, which is published in JSAM, the Journal of Environmental Science and Management Journal of the University of the Philippines. As to the presentation of the general problem to be explored, the article, the paper is started with the statement coming from United Nations Environmental Program reporting that extreme flooding 
brought about by climate crisis will continuously persist as the global climate continues to change rapidly. So it's a report from United Nations Environment Program. Okay? So uh, on the article, this is where the general problem has been explained. That is the first, that should be the first paragraph. Okay? Actually, you can download that article. It's free from the net. No? Because uh, I am a professor also in in uh, writing. And, you know, models in writing are very necessary for students to write a better output. So you also get, you also read samples of articles on how to write it down and eventually get a strategy, get insights from the authors and you could eventually come up with a good introduction section. The next level is presenting the issue or circumstance, circumstance at a continental or national or regional level. So in the same article, assessing the floodgates, utilization of social capital as adaptation to flooding of selected households into barangays in Bay Laguna, Philippines, here, the impact of drastic changes in weather conditions are now manifested through destructive calamities. Issue on continental national countries such as Japan, Vietnam, Thailand, and Philippines are among those frequently hit by natural disasters. In the past decades, the Philippines experienced several natural disasters that claim lives of thousands of people. To date, Typhoon Yolanda, or the international name as Haiyan, has been the worst and most devastating typhoon that caused massive destruction in southern provinces in 2013. So, this is the national or continental perspective. In the theory, oh, sorry, in, in the example, it's also found in the first paragraph of this given example. So, the national, continental, and regional problem. Next one will be the theory that underpins the study. In the same article, there's a paragraph explaining what is the theory. So the term social capital was coined by Pierre Bourdieu, a French sociologist. And Bourdieu reformulated the conceptualization of social relations by identifying various sources of capital to make up social structures. So we have our social capital, our cohesiveness as community. As defined by Bourdieu, it is an aggregate of the actual potential resources which are linked to the possession of durable network or more or less institutionalized relationships and mutual acquaintance or recognition. Of course, in the literature gap of the study, uh, sorry, the theory underpins the study in a given example. Ito po siya, no? Theory underpins the study. There's a paragraph. And of course, the gap in literature. So take note that in the gap of literature, this is where you can read the debate or arguments coming from different authors. So in the introduction section, it is very necessary that you write down authors and year that there's actually a debate or argument in the problem of this, the study or the problem of inquiry. So this research differentiates itself from other studies published, such as those of Yudson et al. in 2020, Dan and Mustak in 2011, whose both studies focus on flooding incidents in Vietnam. It is clear that individuals and societies have adapted to climate change over the course of human history and then will continue to do so, climate being part of the wider environmental landscapes of human habitation. So this is the gap in the literature. No. Next. The practical gap. Definitely, you need to explain the practical gap of the study wherein you write down in one paragraph in a particular community. So most of the areas in Bay are frequently flooded and some are the Barangay Tagumpay is the most flood prone with hazard index of 0.92 so ang taas no now barangay san agustin is the most exposed to risk because of its high population density and barangay maitim has the highest vulnerability index however 
practical problem, 9 out of the 10 sample barangays have high levels of resilience and adapted capacity to plant. Siguro laging nababaha. Okay? Next, this will be the portion of the practical problem in the specific article. Of course, in the local environment of the study, you need to explain why the study is, is a felt need for a community. So the province of Laguna, Philippines, located 30 kilometers south of the Manila, is exposed to multitude of hazards with flooding as a main problem. So water flowing from the Laguna Divide, the inland rivers, altered the province's landscape, creating vast bodies of water due to heavy downpours. Laguna de Bay is also the largest lake in the country with 21 tributaries. Through the years, flooding in most of the towns of province has destroyed property, impaired sources of livelihood, and affected the lives of the residents. And this is where the local environment of the study is presented here. Okay? And next, as to the aim of the study, so here, specifically, This research aims to determine the social demographic characteristics of households, measure the relationship between the social demographic characteristics of their participants, and the different forms of social capital of the households, and analyze the participants' adaptive capacity to floods in relation with social capital. So, this is where you write down the aim of the study. So a review of the eight pyramid model, I think, and I hope this will help you guide in crafting your research introduction into a better paper and a better paper that it will be scientific and uh, can be assessed by your research professors, by your panel of examiners, by the peer reviewers that the research paper is actually scientific. Because introduction pa lang, kung meron na itong mga elements na ito, mga elemento, itong mga elements nito, no, that is actually a very good research introduction. Okay? So, my dear students, in writing your introduction section for your article, I am leaving this as your research activity. And how do a portion we're in jot down some of the concepts you could actually uh, have in your written research papers and try to tailor fit them using these eight elements. No? Uh, just even just a summary, write it down, the concepts in the sheet, and I hope this could eventually help you write a better introduction for a research paper. Another concern is we are taught that the introduction section is where you can write the research gap of your study. So I would like to have a brief lecture on how to put the research gap found in the introduction section. Because if you are writing your research and you are a researcher, at least you know what research gaps are you addressing. So the research gap found in the introduction section can be the seven research gaps as explained by Miles in 2017. In the taxonomy of research gaps and identifying the seven research gaps. So the first gap will be the evidence gap. If your research paper is addressing an evidence gap, meaning... Evidence gap, meaning new research finding, contradicts widely to accepted conclusion. That 
you are stating in your introduction section in one paragraph that there are authors stating that girls are better in language than males, for example. But there are succeeding studies telling that males are better in language processing than female. So it explains the evidence gap there. So what is the gap of your research? The second gap is your knowledge gap, which is the common gap in the prior research that uh, there are limited studies conducted about this one that you would like to explore. So that could quantify itself as a knowledge gap. So you can tell that your study will be the first study in your institution, in your university. That can be a knowledge gap that you would like to explore the uh, uh, motivation and grit level of the students in relationship to their academic performance. So that could be a knowledge gap. Another concern is a practical to knowledge gap is there's a discrepancy no, with that uh, that can motivate new research in this direction. So practical to knowledge gap. So what has been practiced is not yet doc documented. So there's something new that can be explored. Okay, And I would like to tell you that uh, I came from the province when the Homo Luzonensis has been discovered by anthropologists. And this is eventually a species from 50,000 to 60,000 years ago that we have this uh, ancient, ancient uh, history of human being. And we were able to have that. No, that because they found bones, they excavated bones of uh, Homo Lusinensis in one of the caves of Cagayan, and that's in Callao Cave. And listening students, you could actually visit Cagayan, you go to Callao Cave, and you can uh, understand more about the origin of human being. So that can be a practical to knowledge gap. Another research is methodological gap is the type of gap that deals with the conflicts that occurs due to the influence of methodology on results, research results. Take note that uh, some of the researches, when you explain your introduction section, that your research will be the first research to be utilizing a Solomon for way uh, for square test or Solomon uh, technique or quasi-experimental, mixed method, conjoint display analysis, Latin square in your particular intervention, then that could actually an, uh, addressing a methodological gap. Because methodology talks about the methods in your research. And the methods, take note that there is no such, kind, that such thing as 100% research methodology. So there are always... Uh, advantages and disadvantages. But we are nearing to perfection. That's why we are trying to provide a better uh, research design for a particular problem of inquiry. So you can state that in your introduction section. The other one is the empirical gap telling that your research will be the first research in the world to conduct such kind of research. So that can be a breakthrough contribution to science and to community that the research uh, note is study to date has directly attempted to evaluate or to conduct a study referring to your research using an empirical approach. And of course, your theoretical gap is a type of gap that deals with a gap in theory with prior research with prior research and theories, meaning there are theories that are actually uh, happening or theories that are actually uh, discovered before that your study would like to contribute to that existing theory. And of course, this, this is the most common type of gap is the population gap. And sometimes I call this as parallel study because researchers are doing parallel study because they have different audience, different uh, different target communities. Meaning to say, 
when one would like to study sustainability practices of community in southern Philippines, then another study can be conducted in northern Philippines or eastern Philippines or what uh, will be the population of the study. Because take note, different population has different attributes, has different characteristics. So they share different concepts, different uh, understanding, different processing of information. So I hope that this research gap will be found in your introduction section and new research writers could actually define what will be the gap of your research. That's why when your research panel will, uh, will tell you what is the gap of your research, then you are confident to answer that your research is addressing <clears throat> uh, evidence gap, theoretical gap, population gap, methodological gap. Take note, one research paper could address two to three research gaps. But if you are really confident enough that your research is actually the first of its kind, then empirical gap is the heaviest type of gap that the research could actually uh, provide. So this is where how you can answer your research professors if they will uh, question you what gap are you addressing. Okay? So another one, I would like to give you, to leave you a phrase bank, the Manchester Academic Phrase Bank on writing your introduction section. So the Manchester Academic Praise Bank has been developed by the uh, University of Manchester in UK. And I found this one very useful. I used to teach this one to my students. So the Academic Praise Bank is a general resource for academic writers, and it aims to provide you with example some of the phrases, which they call it the nuts and bolts of writing organized uh, literature uh, introduction according to main sources. So you open the www.academicphrasebank.manchester. I hope it uh, appears now in the screen. Okay. And you go to introducing a work. How do you write your introduction? So there are tips we're in. It gives you idea on how to write an academic essay, academic paper, or, or, or a research paper, and academic writers. Okay? So just a tip for introducing a work, establish the context, the background, importance of the topic. The one I introduced to you, the eight models, uh, the, the, eight type, the eight elements of the pyramidal model. Present issue, problem, controversy, define the topic, state the purpose, and provide overview of the coverage or structure of the writing. So why, uh, what are the elements? So these are the elements. So when you write your introduction section and you wish to establish the importance of the topic to the world or society, you use the phrases, X is a major contributor to X plays Emerge, uh, X have emerged as a powerful platform for. Okay? So there is an evidence that X plays a pivotal role in regulating. So X is a key issue in, key driver of, factor in, aspect of, feature of, element of, strategy for, indicator of, ingredient in, component of, mechanism of, or determinant of. So when you establish the importance of the research topic for a specific discipline, X is a major area of concern within the field of establishing the importance of the topic with a given time frame. You use the phrases, recently there has been a renewed interest in establishing the importance of the topic is a problem to be addressed. The main disadvantage of X is that or X is a key issue in X is associated with increased risk. X is a common disorder characteristics. S is one of the most frequently stated problems with. However, X may cause, X is limited by, X can extremely harmful. Referring to previous works established what is already known, you can use these phrases. Recent evidence suggests that, okay, so several number of studies, researchers have found, researchers have reported, researchers have identified, researchers have highlighted, researchers have shown that identifying controversy 
explaining inadequacies of previous studies, identifying paucity or lack of previous research, identifying a knowledge gap, stating a focus or argument of a short paper, stating the purpose of the current research. This study will examine the, this, study, this dissertation will seek two and more. Okay, so this study set out to clarify aspects of and describing research designs and methods, explaining the significance of the current study, describing the limitations, giving reasons for personal interest of the research, outlining the structure of the paper or explaining key terms. So I hope you could actually use this academic phrase bank as a source of phrases in writing your research paper. Okay, so take note that again, that this introduction section is a targeted to answer an area of darkness. It will address a specific issue, discuss the contribution of the paper and motivation of the paper. Okay, so in a paper I have written, titled Use of Technology-Based Tools and Ensuring Quality of Publishable Article, I started writing it with a global, continental, regional, and national local context. So I got data from European Commission report and explaining that the study is anchored in a level that it is globally situated, continentally situated, regionally situated, nationally, nationally situated at the same time locally situated. Okay? So point out the gap. So I already explained this one a while back. So with that, I'm expecting that uh, most of you could actually write a very good introduction of your research paper and again the activity sheet will be to tailor fit your research introduction using the eight elements I discussed. So should there be questions? The questions will be answered personally by me to our live encounter. And should there be questions, this time you can uh, ask the facilitator to, you can ask the facilitator your questions and that will be forwarded to me and I can provide answers. That ends the process, the process on packaging your introduction section. Thank you very much and happy writing.